Well, I tell you, it's obvious from uh, all that's happening and the reports we've heard and the blessings that we're experiencing from God that things are well, and we have much to give thanks for. And I want to tell you, it's, uh, it's very, I'm very privileged to be a part of this uh, group of believers to see what God is doing. And we ought, to, we ought to be excited about what God is doing, really. Uh, we are a unique group of people. Of course, you know what unique means. It means weird. <laughs> it means unusual. It also means gifted. And uh, folks who are paying attention, so it has multiple meanings. Well, I'm going to be reading tonight from Lamentations, chapter 3, and we're going to begin in verse 21. I don't know how many of you make notes in your Bible when a preacher preaches from a particular text or not, but just so I don't have to make you feel guilty. I used this here in 2019, okay? So I'm, I'm, well, I'm well aware. I'm not forgetful. I know I did it, okay? Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Lord, we pray tonight that your word would uh, find lodging in our hearts and minds and that the truth that you want us to learn tonight would be so evident that we could not miss it. And so I pray, Lord, that you would speak to us and speak through us. And may all that we say glorify and praise your name, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the book of Lamentations is not a book that you go to to read all the time, do you? Probably if we took a survey, uh, it's been a while since you've read in the book of Lamentations. Because it's a very sad book, it describes some very terrible things that are going on. Jeremiah the prophet, you remember, was called of God to do a job, to be a prophet, to speak for him. And yet, right off the bat, God said to Jeremiah, you're not going to be successful. How would you like to hear that? How would Dale Carnegie handle that? You're not going to be successful. In fact, he had a very terrible life. He suffered much. In fact, he ended up in prison. He was jailed because of his outspoken, truthful message from God. And I want to tell you, that has lots of uh, things that are speaking to us today. Being a Christian and living in America today is not like it used to be. And it certainly, apparently, is going to get more difficult. I tell you, most of us in this room have had a wonderful time in our Christian life in America We've had freedom to come to church. We didn't have to worry. We didn't have to have security. But things are changing. And I'm wondering what the future holds. 
And I think this is exactly what Jeremiah was thinking as he penned the words of lamentation. He lists all the things that are going wrong and all the bad things that are happening. And, and it's a unique book, and I'm not going to point out the uniqueness of it. You can discover that on your own. But in these words, in the middle of the book, he comes to these conclusions, and he comes to know that his hope is in the faithfulness of God. You see, unlike you and I, God never changes. God never changes his mind. That's something that's hard for us to understand, isn't it? We just have a difficult time getting a hold of that because we're changing things all the time. But God is faithful. He never changes. He can be depended upon. One of the things that Genesis chapter 8, 22 points out is the fact that the promise of God is that seed time and harvest Day and night, summer and winter, will never change. Well, that speaks to some groups that are quite vocal these days in America. In other words, the God of glory is also the God of... the God of what's going to happen in this universe. He is the God of nature, and he controls it. Yes, we have responsibilities. God gave us responsibilities how to take care of things, and we need to be good stewards of that. But ultimately, God is in control. And that ought to be humbling to us, and it ought to remind us that we can find comfort and hope in that truth <clears throat> that God is in control and that he knows exactly what he's doing and he will carry out his purpose. Our responsibility, <clears throat> like Jeremiah is, when God calls us, we're to be faithful. Wherever he puts us, we're to be faithful to him because he is always faithful to us. And I know over and over in this, the Scripture recounts the fact that God is faithful. You can find those references if you want to do a word study. But God has always been faithful. He has been faithful to redeem us, to give us eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He has also been faithful to Correct us. Boy, that's something we don't like to hear, is it? But his love extends to us like any parent. He's looking out for us to keep us from danger, keep us from hurting ourselves, to keep us in a place where we can enjoy his faithfulness and be blessed by his goodness and his mercy. God corrects us. He chastens us. And the truth is, that ought to be a security thing. You know, I used, I used to hear these statements, and you have too. When your parent, your mom or your dad would give you a spanking or a whipping, I had some, and I needed them. They would always say, this hurts me more than it hurts you. <laughs> I never believed that, really. But the truth is, they were, they were doing something to be a blessing to us, even though it was painful. And they proved by their discipline that they really cared. They really loved us because they saw the dangers out there. They saw the difficulties that were ahead. And so our God, being faithful that he is, does the same thing for us. And I know sometimes we complain about it, we think God's being mean to us or not, God's not being fair to us. But God's trying to teach us because he loves us and he wants to correct us. Well, y'all can tell I'm really on the ball. I can't find my notes. 
God not only corrects us, but He is in the process of glorifying us. 1 Peter 1.12 says, that The God that hath begun a good work in you will finish it. And that's encouraging to all of us. We're here tonight because God's not through with us yet. He still has work to do on us, and we still have work to do for Him. And I want to tell you, that ought to be encouraging. That's hopeful. That's what Jeremiah came to the conclusion of in these verses that I read to you. The hope was that God was faithful and that regardless of what transpires, regardless of what happens, he's not going to leave us alone. In fact, it was Job that said, maybe in six things God takes care of me, but even in seven, God never forsakes me. The precious promise of God's word is that he stays with us. He keeps us safe. And he keeps us secure. And I know it's easy to complain, but we ought to listen to what the Apostle Peter had to say in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, as unto a faithful creator. Our God is faithful. God wants us to portray to the rest of the world the truth that he is a faithful God. And the world needs to see in us that we are faithful to him.